Okay. Yeah, so we have this, uh, we have this um, uh, sort of shade structure, so it can be hot when people are hanging out here. So this is designed to mimic a uh, kelp, kelp canopy, so we can talk about the offshore environment here with the kids or, or anybody. Um, somebody also mentioned there's kelp fronds uh, embedded in the concrete. So this is just a, not super important, but this is a nice little de design element, right? So we have an area to sit. People can have lunch. You can set up microscopes here if you're doing some kind of you know, outdoor science lab or something. And so kind of cool because one, we could explain what kelp is. If, if maybe folks have not been to the beach before or whatever, they don't know these things. We can show them they're, they're real. They're actually real leaves and real fronds of algae that we just pressed into it. So it's real, it's you know, life size. We can, we can talk about how big they are, all that cool stuff. There's, there's uh, bird tracks and stuff. So a little bit of art, a little bit of interpretation. Really, I think a very nice merging of the two. Then if we, uh, sorry, other, other ideas or other things you guys saw or observed? Okay, other things are we have places to hang out over here. We have some, um, we have some uh, picnic tables and we have some uh, chairs you can sit on. But uh, have a look. One of the issues that we have going on here in actually all of our coastal sites, issues with homeless folks, right? And so by all means, this is, this is a state park. It's open to everybody. But obviously if we have a large homeless encampment right here, that's gonna be hard to do interpretation with little kids and things of that nature, right? So one of the things here with the, with the chairs, if you guys wanna go sit down, you should try them. You sit down and they're you know, a nice little place to sit, but you sit and you're like this, right? You're like, ugh. So there's no headrest. The, the, the back of the chair comes up to sort of mid back. So they're okay to sit, but it's hard to sleep in those chairs. So a, a design element, maybe that was successful, maybe not, but the idea is to try to make something that's, that's functional for the visitor, but isn't too attractive to encourage folks to stay for hours and hours and hours and hours on end. Defensive architecture. Defensive architecture, there you go. Okay, we got that going on. <clears throat> then as we'll go down a second, we're gonna see, there's, a, there's a, a, a model of the watershed over here, so we'll see that. Again, another thing to interpret. And all these elements, uh, important to note, they're here 24 hours a day. So if you wanna come back with your family on a Saturday, you can see the model of the watershed. You can look at the fronds, right? So you nobody, has, nobody has to pay to come to this museum or come, pay to see this exhibit. So they're here all the time. So they're not only available to folks like us, but they're available to Joe Blow public visiting for the first time, which is really cool. Um, as we walk on the path, we'll see in a bit, but the pathway also has different, the path, um, the path uh, uh, changes in elevation and there's different markers for each of the, uh, with, with the elevation. So we can see what, if, when the water actually comes up to the, to the um, walkway, you can actually see what the height of the water is. So you can have conversations about inundation and things of that nature. Um, uh, and there's, there's all our other elements as well. Um, uh, yeah, questions about the interpretation of this? Okay, so then we'll start, we'll start our meandering walk. Uh, first thing before we get too far is let's just look right over here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna walk out into the parking lot and then we'll go out around that way. But have a look at this. So we would refer to this as a bioswale, or we, we you can refer to this as a bioswale. So, as we mentioned before, one of the issues is we're in a Mediterranean ecosystem. Rain comes down, problem. So if we have, especially the so-called first flush of the year, when we have, uh, you know, dirt and, and oils and things of that nature that are building up on the roadbed, and then we have the first really good rain of the year and it takes all those oils out and it throws them into the storm drain and you know all the water quality problems associated with that. So to deal with this, this is a permeable parking lot. So it says decomposed granite. So the water can percolate down into it. It's not solid concrete. But then instead of the water, which is what used to happen, flowing off the parking lot into the wetland, further complicating water quality, etc. Now we have these little, 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 little uh, dividers here. So one, it gives us some visual protection. So it, you don't see the cars when you're walking out here, which is kind of nice. Gives a little bit of sound. We can listen right now. So we can hear PCH, but it would be even louder if we didn't have these trees. So it gives us a little bit of a sound protection, not just for us, but for the birds and everybody else. 
Uh, so now the water is going to come off. It's going to go into this area and it's going to do two things. So one, that water is going to have to percolate through the ground and have a bit of filtering. So it'll be a bit cleaner when it gets into the lagoon. But two, it's acting to funnel water to these plants. So because it's a low spot, it's going to be easier if we, initially when we first plant these, maybe we want to water it. It's, you know, everything's in a sort of contained area, a low point, but also it's going to act to concentrate that rainwater to the vegetation that we want to get going sooner. So that'll do two things. That'll one, either help the plants establish and or help the plants grow faster than if they were at ground level, regular plantings. Cool? Okay, let's keep walking. And again, if you guys want me to get my bullhorn, I'm happy to grab my bullhorn, but otherwise I'll just talk loud. Okay. Okay, interpretive element. Oh, I'll stand over here so we can better socially distance. Okay, so interpretive element, uh, next interpretive element. So here's the roundabout. And note, in the middle of the roundabout is another bioswale, right? So there's another, another area to treat water in there. So this is a metallic version of the Malibu Creek watershed, okay? So here's where, where the water is coming. It's coming down here through Malibu Canyon. You and I are right here. So this is, I didn't bring any water. If you guys have water, you can't. You can just come up here. You can just pour water here, and it's going to kind of perk up, and it's going to splop on down to here, and it'll go in one of these little path, pathways, right? Which is, and this represents the actual coastline of Los Angeles, this, this uh, trough down here. So another cool thing uh, people can, can uh, check out and do stuff with. Okay, so let's turn around and start to look at, uh, oh, sorry, questions about that? Okay, so let's turn around and start to just every wherever you are, just look over here. We'll start talking about the vegetation and stuff. Let me put this thing here, maybe. Okay, so um, starting to see some of the different um, uh, uh, zonation. I think maybe a little bit easier, maybe right here. So again, up until a couple weeks ago, this water was where, where the sediment looks dark color. That was all the water was that high. So the water was just basically um, up to or almost up to this walkway here. So right now we're looking at sort of mud flat, uh, sort of standing water. And as we come up, we'll get to a band. That band you'll see some, right now it's looking kind of greenish, uh, greenish, um, uh, 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 light green, dark green kind of thing. So that is a band of algae. The algae is going to be a mix of enteromorpha, which is E-N-T-E-R-O, entero, M-O-R-P-H-A, enteromorpha, which is the genus, or ulva, U-L-V-A, which is the genus. Um, uh, usually we just, it's sort of a complex, they're, they're, they're related, but that's another question. Uh, anyway, so that, that's uh, green algae, very fast growing. It's only one or a couple cells thick. So it's very, very paper thin, it grows very quickly really really great collector of photo of, of sunlight energy so we see that band right there then as we come a little bit higher we you guys can't quite see but sort of what's covering a lot of that mud flat is, are, um, is a film of diatoms or a film of, of, of single celled algal guys can you guys hear me okay it's okay the motorcycle you guys still hear me every over there you guys can you guys can hear me okay okay so um anyway so then we have this film of of microbes basically on the surface mussels will be eating or uh, snails will be eating that things of that nature as we talked about the serothidia earlier then we come up and then we get to the uh, a band that starts to have a little bit of patchy patchy um plants 
the, the, the little patch we see right here, that's uh, the first one is salicornia or pickleweed. Salicornia is the old genus, but, but a pickleweed. Okay, classic salt marsh plant. Then we have we come up and it's either uh, not much or a little bit of a gap. And then we get into uh, this uh, higher elevation salt marsh vegetation. Also, salicor also pickleweed in there, but then we start to see other things. And as we come farther up, we start to get into more of these uh, 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 juncus. We start to get to these other sort of transitional species. And then as we come up to where you guys are standing, we're basically into the, the terrestrial fringe. So in some wetlands, this is a very broad area, really, really broad area. In this, in this site, it's a very narrow transition. So as the crow flies, we go in 10, 20, 30 feet, we've gone from purely aquatic to purely terrestrial. And that's just a consequence of this very steep-sided steep -sided system here. But that's not how all of our salt marshes are. Cool?